on our series about the Holy Spirit. <coughs> the Holy Spirit really is a series or teaching on the inner life. Christian life is lived from the inside out, not from the outside in. Many, many years ago, back in maybe 1980, was introduced to the inner life of the Lord and made a radical Im Im impact on my life when I realized when I learned to realize that I could hear God and that I could journal. He taught me how to journal, and it opened up a whole new world to me. I'd been a Christian all my life and never heard anything much about the Holy Spirit. So we're going to be been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue to talk about the Holy Spirit in John 14, 16. Jesus has been with the disciples roughly three years. He's been mentoring them, discipling them, helping them learn about the deeper things, the inner life. And he's getting ready to go to the cross. He knows he won't be with them much longer physically. So he says, I'm going to ask the Father on your behalf, and He's going to give you someone else that's going to help you, a helper. And this helper may be with, with you forever. He said that the moment we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, it was a an imputation, we were imputed the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a byproduct, it's part of the benefits package of being a salvation is that the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. And He's going to have a role to play. He says He's going to be our helper. How many ever Need some help in living this Christian life. Amen. We can't live a successful, victorious Christian life without the Holy Spirit. And the Lord knows that. So we've been given a helper that has taken up permanent residence. It dwells with us. It's going to be there forever. No matter once you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And no matter what you do, He's going to follow you until the day you die. He, you may desert him, but he's promised he'll never desert you or forsake you. So it's it's with you. It's forever implanted. And that helper is, is the word paracletus. That's where we get our word paraclete, which is the word for... It means to call to one's aid or to come alongside and to help someone who is in distress... It's kind of the word for advocate. We talked about the Holy Spirit. One of his roles is an advocate. He's like a little lawyer. An attorney that lives inside of us. That uh, provides legal aid or spiritual assistance. I was thinking today about uh, on, the, on the highways. They have these road rangers guys that just drive up down the highway. <coughs> Basically they're just waiting for somebody to call and say, Hi, I'm, I'm in crisis, I need assistance, and they rush to there and they come alongside them and help them get up and run again. <clears throat> so in those times when it's difficult to live the Christian life and we don't know what to do and we go through all these different crises and things, one of the things that we need to know that we know that we know is that we have a, a paraclete, a helper, someone who's there to help us live this Christian life. There's no way I could live this life and do what I'm doing without having a roadside ranger to come alongside and to help me. So his job is to enable me, to equip me, to empower me when I'm incapable. He makes me capable. He does for me what I can't do for myself. Steps one says that we admitted or finally admitted that we were powerless over the effects of our separation from God, that our lives became unmanageable. Aside from him, you know, my life became unmanageable, but I finally came to a place where I identified 
Jesus is my higher power in the form of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit now is my higher power. He, he lives inside of me. He does for me what I can't do for myself. He helps me, comes along and assists me uh, in all the areas of my life where I'm unmanageable. So the Holy Spirit has uh, a job to do, a role to play, key responsibility areas, functions and purposes, and one of them is to be our helper. We talked about different things. Uh, one is he's there to empower us and to teach us, to guide us, to convict us, to become an advocate, to an intercessor, to convict us, to comfort us. And the last few weeks we talked about his anointing, how his anointing is in us. And, and that anointing, his, the helper, gives us anointing that rises up and helps us helps make life easier for us if we will learn to rely on that Holy Spirit. So tonight we're going to talk about another role, another aspect of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be called Zoe Life. Probably be on it for two or three weeks. But Zoe Life is, is about the inner life. It's about the abundant life or eternal life or the God kind of life. How many in here tonight would like to experience the abundant life? Yeah. Yeah. Now there's how I many know there's a difference between living and life? There's people today that are on this planet and they're living, and they're breathing and functioning and going through, but they don't have any real quality of, of life, certainly not an abundant life. I remember going to AA meetings and hearing guys that are 25 and 30 years clean and talk about their life, and I'm like, man, you know, these guys are miserable and cussing like sailors they put the plug in the jug but they're nothing more than dry drunks and they've been living this way that's miserable a miserable way to live i got to think of man the last thing i'm gonna do is live that kind of miserable life. i'd rather go at least at least drink and enjoy myself a little if i'm gonna live that kind of life so i said man that that offered me very little hope then i remember reading a scripture john 7 38 that says that he the individual who believes in me, meaning Jesus Christ, or looks to Jesus as their higher power, or turns to the inner life and looks inwardly, not outwardly, but someone who looks inwardly, it says from his innermost being, some amplified, or the King James says the word belly, from his innermost belly shall flow rivers of living water. I remember reading that scripture and you know, I saw in there that you know there wasn't just I didn't have to just live and exist, but I, there there was some kind of life here that it was talking about, and this excited me. Uh, experiencing not just living, but having a life that flowed up deep from my belly, that that flowed like rivers of living water. Now that that got me excited. Didn't know a lot about what it was, but what it's really talking about it was, it was talking about what the Holy Spirit can do for you. The Holy Spirit can change you from just living and existing and walking around and, and part of the byproduct of giving us the Holy Spirit is He's, he's called us to, be, to have a life, an abundant life. Now John 10.10 10 is a powerful, powerful scripture that's loaded, rich in Greek words. It says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus is, is talking about uh, <clears throat> Jesus is basically saying that there's a war going on and the war is over our soul. He's talking about uh, two different agendas. Two motives. And he says, one, he says that, that the, the thief <coughs> the thief comes only. His only agenda, his only motive is to steal kill and destroy. But Jesus says that I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. The Amplified says the thief comes only. His only objective is to kill, steal, and destroy. But he says I came that they might have 
life and enjoy life. Have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Now the word thief is our word klepto. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Basically what a klepto is, he's, he's there to steal. <coughs> klepto or a kleptomaniac. Kleptomaniac is somebody that's got a serious problem. Uh, it's a compulsive, addictive, weird sort of thing where they've got this habit where they just have to steal. They don't, they're not really stealing because they really need the money or whatever. Uh, I mean, there's some movie star some time back when I when I known a writer or whatever. Millionaire gets arrested for shoplifting. And basically, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that she needed money. She just there was something in her that was compulsive that just had to steal because of the thrill of doing something and not getting caught. So what this word kleptomania uh, refers to uh, who someone is, is, is it's kind of like at, at a professional level. These are like pickpockets, a pickpocket, a professional pickpocket. They can, they can go up and, and, and just that quick can have your bill fold and be gone and you never even knew what hit you. Where did my, where, what happened to me? Where did my money go? And, and they're just that good at it. So this word klepto, the, the thief, one of his jobs is he's, he's there to, to steal from him. He needs to take what rightfully doesn't belong to him. To rob you blind to the point where you all of a sudden you he stole from you every everything. Your money, your family, your health, your marriage. He's out to he's out to be a professional that pounces on you, has a compulsive nature where he's relentless. He's not going to stop until he <coughs> stole every single thing that you have that is dear and near to you. To rob you blind, undetected. The word kill is the word thuo. And this refers to a the sacrifice of an animal, something that you surrender willingly by choice. It's not something you're forced to do, it's just something for whatever reason you, you sacrifice, you just give it up. So the enemy, he's out to, to, to rob you blind of everything you have, and if he can't steal everything from you, then the next thing he wants to do is he wants to get you to, to willfully choose to sacrifice, to give up everything that is precious and dear to you. If he can't steal it, he wants to take everything that's left. Now the word kill, steal, now the next word kill, steal, and destroy, is the word Apollonia. I think that's how you spell it. And this uh, means that, uh, that he, he wants to steal everything. If you can't do that, he wants to cunningly convince you to give up everything else that you have, to just give it up. How many of you have seen some people finally just as well, I've, I've blown it now, so I might as well just I drink ten, you drink a couple beers. I'm drunk. I might as well go ahead and drink the rest of the week. I've spent two hundred dollars in crap. Why not just spend it? Spend the rest of it. I mean, you say, well, you you got me now, so you just roll over and say, why don't you just go ahead and take it all? And that, that's cunningly the devil wants to get you. If you can't steal it, he wants you to just to, just to roll over and say, just take everything. The second word, destroy, does, doesn't mean to kill, steal, and destroy. Is the word apoluma. It means to. Uh, means the word ruined, or wasted, trashed, devastated, destroyed. So what he can't steal from you, he wants you to, to give it up, but his ultimate goal is to destroy you. That, that, he wants to ruin your life. He wants to castrate you to the point where, where you're just uh, worthless in this society. We see that on the street all the time, don't we? People that are living on the street that could get a job, they could do other things, but something happened in them. You know, in their life or whatever, where they just turn themselves over and they just say, I just don't care anymore. I'm a, I'm a ruined, wasted life and, 
and I, don't, I just don't care about anything and they're not dead but they're no use to anybody to themselves they're just out there existing that, that's, what, that's what the devil wants to do in your life he wants to steal everything then he wants you to give up everything else that's dear to you by choice and the goal is not to physically take you out then because you'd be no use to him at all but he wants to just render you uh, no good for, for anything that's what his goal is so his goal ultimately is, is, to, is to bring about death. Not a physical death, but uh, a spiritual death, a mental death, the emotion, every, every sense of the word, he wants, he's out to destroy you. Rick Rayner says in his expanded version, says the thief wants to get his hands in every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for an opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and possessions, he'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level. He'll create conditions and situations that are so horrible, you'll see no way to solve the problems except to sacrifice everything that remains from his previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally waste and devastate your life. If nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you've finished out of business. And make no mistake, the enemy's ultimate sin is to obliterate you. How many of you have ever experienced the kleptomaniac coming against you in your life? Well, that's, that's just the life of just existing. But Jesus... <coughs> says right here, the thief comes to do all those things. He said, but I came that you might have life that you might have abundantly. You might have life and enjoy it to the full till it overflows. Now, the word abundant is the word parisos. It means to be above and beyond something. It means to have a surplus plus. It means a life that is extraordinary, super in abundance overflowing to the full to have and possess something continually habitually that you can enjoy life to the full and keep enjoying it a life that is fulfilled and is extremely vital so here we have the agenda of the thief to kill Cyril and to take your life but here here God his plan is to give you not just the life to existing but he wants to give you an abundant life that leads to a life. This is our word Zoe. It refers to uh, an, an abundant, abundant, exceeding, super exciting life. A life that is unimaginable, unspeakable, unmeasurable, unthinkable, undescribably. It's a life that is off the chain and to the max. Now, how many does that sound more like the life you want to have? Yeah. So we have this life in us, but so we're going to talk about what is the Zoe life, but we're going to talk about how to, how to dive in and really get a hold of life indeed and to not just exist, but to, to live a life that's exceedingly abundant. That's what God wants for you. He doesn't want you just to get the plug in the jug and get off drugs. And he wants you to get out and have fun. Man, I don't, I, I've finally arrived in my place over years of hard work where I can, I can go out and, and I can have fun and I don't have to drink. I don't have to drug. I don't have to be promiscuous. I can learn to be out there and walk down the streets and get, go places and I can see the bars and the things going on. I was up at New Smyrna Beach right on Flagler Avenue this week and, and I uh, had lunch up there. Man, and there's craziness going on around me and I'm just kind of laughing it off. It it's not bothering me. That thing doesn't bother me anymore. I'm, they don't have a clue of what I have. I've got life. I've got an abundant life. I'm sitting in there going... Man, if I die today, I know that I know that I know that I don't just have life, but I got eternal life. I'm going to live forever, forever, forever. I got hope. Amen. I don't need to drink. I don't need to do these things. And it makes me feel good that I can walk with my head high and, and not feel like that thing's on me all the time, where I'm missing out on something. They're the ones that are missing out. I'm the one that's got it going on. Amen? Amen. So turn with me now. We're going to look at... In 1 John 3 9. So this this is what this is what Rick Reiner has to say in his Greek gems. This is a, he says, but I came that they might have a and keep a constant, 
constantly to retain a vitality, a gusto, a vigor, a zest for living that springs up from deep down with inside. I came that they might embrace this unrivaled, unequaled, matchless, incomparable, richly loaded, and overflowing life to the ultimate maximum. Does that sound like what you want? Yeah. Now the word... So this word, life, is our word, Greek word for Zoe. It comes from uh, the word to, to live, but it really means to experience something. Spell that right. What this word refer it refers it refers to God life. Or the God kind of life, the life that he enjoys, that he experiences. It refers to a, a super abundance. Abundant life. But it also refers to eternal life. Eternal life. Now in 1 John 3 9, it says, No one who has been born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him, and he cannot <coughs> sin because he is born again. Now this word, what it and the Amplified says, No one who is begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin, for God's nature abides in him, his principle of life, God's principle of life, his nature. The divine sperm remains permanently within him, and he cannot practice sin because he's been born again. One of the, one of the signs, one of the things that if we're born again, we've been given the seed. The actual word, if you look it up in the Greek, is the word sperma. It means Zoe life or God life. I've been impregnated. The minute I got born again, I was it was an immaculate conception. I was impregnated, and here I'm a man. But the minute I was born again as a byproduct of salvation, I was imputed. The Holy Spirit came into me and now I have God's life or like a miniature God, a seed. God's DNA, His nature, God life is in me, but it's in an infant state. It's in a seed. And seeds re reproduce after their kind. So what John is saying is that if you've been born again in the seed of God, it's, it's impossible for you to practice Sin, it's, it's, it, you, know, you may sin, but to live a life of, practic uh, of practicing habitually, knowingly, deliberately, living a life constantly, a life of sin, it's impossible because God's nature is in you. God's nature is, is holy. You can't be impregnated with a holy spirit and keep producing an unholy life. If, if you are, something's really wrong in there. You may still be making mistakes, but the minute the seed takes over, it's going to reproduce after its kind. Apple seeds produce apples. Oranges produce apples. Watermelons produce watermelons. The Holy Spirit, the DNA, the life of God in me, that sperm is pregnant and it, it's supposed to grow and it, it should produce a godly life. So if it's not producing godly life, then, then you need to check your salvation. One of the greatest assurances that I have that I'm born again today is that I make mistakes and I sin, but I don't live a life, I don't live a, 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 a literal lifestyle that's a habit of, of sin. It's impossible for someone to born. You may have seasons of sin where you're away from God, but to live a life like that, it's, it's impossible. So, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is He's taken up a seed form, and now His purpose is to produce a godly life. Now, if you're not saved, there's no way that you can have life, you can exist, 
But you can't have the Zoe life. You can't have the abundant life. That comes only as a byproduct of being born again. And so if you're not a Christian, you're just out there. There's no way you can experience an abundant life. You might have joy for a little bit or fun or be happy. You may have all those things. But this kind of life, this God life, it can only comes as a byproduct of the Holy Spirit. It's been given to you by God. You can't make it happen. You can't, it's, it's there. So we have it, but we have to learn how to enjoy it. We have to learn how to release it. And so this is what we're, we're going to be talking about. We, as Christians right here, uh, we're in eternal life. Let me say that again. The minute we get saved, we enter into eternal life. Right now, I'm, I'm gonna, we're all going to live forever, but I'm going to live, I have eternal life. I have God's very life living in me, and it's going to grow, and it's going to develop, and it's going to transform me, it's going to change me, it's going to want to, one of its roles is to make me want to live a godly life. And it assures me that when I die, that I'm going to go be in heaven forever, forever, and forever. And so you as a Christian, He, he came. The thief wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to take death. He wants to take you so far away from that. But God says, Jesus, says, I came that you might have a life and have an abundant life, a life off the chain. It's immeasurable, exhaustless, and undescribable, superabundant, flowing rivers of living water type of life. That's what He wants you to have. And so, let me ask you, are you experiencing that kind of life? If you're not, then you're missing out because it's available to you. So this is why we're teaching this. We're going to learn how to open up this uh, eternal life, this Zoe life. So turn me now to John 6:63. 6, Look at your neighbor and say, "I got some Zoe in me." going to remember this message for Damien to this day. I think it's one of the first messages you heard here, wasn't it, Damien? Yes, sir. Uh, he says, today you remind me, I was up in Daytona with him. We were kicking back on the beach up there. He says something about, where are you, where are you at? He said, I'm in Zoe land, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in the abundant life. And uh, he remembers that teaching. And uh, I just love this, this, this because, you know, I, I can honestly say, man, for those of you that are new Christians or haven't been in recovery that long, I'm here to tell you, man, I, I promise you, what he says right here, this abundant life, it's available to you. It's there, and it does get better and better and better if you keep coming back, and it works if you work it, and, and the more you do it, the more you're going to experience it, and, but you have, to, you have to go after it. Now, there's something we need to know, and there's a principle about Zoe life. In John 6.63, <clears throat> John 6, 63, Jesus is, uh, he's been having a bunch of disciples follow him, and he's talking to them about uh, some weird things. He's talking to them about being the bread of life, and I'm the living water that came down out of heaven, and he's talking about, he says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and people are, what's up with this guy? Is this guy cuckoo or crazy? What, he's a cannibal? And and he starts talking about abiding and about the responsibility of, uh, you know, of being vitally connected and consistently dwelling and eventually walking with the Lord. And, and uh, you know, some are getting it, some are not, and some are being offended. And, and then he goes on in 663, he says, It is the Spirit, the word is pneuma, It is the spirit or the pneuma that gives life or gives the abundant life or the zoe. It's, it's, it's the spirit inside of us that produces this God zoe life that Pastor Dave is talking about. The flesh profits nothing. The word flesh is the word sarks. It refers to our, our physical body. So he says the flesh or the sarks is incapable of producing zoe life. If you're not born again, you can, you can try to have great joy, you can try to have an abundant life, and it's, it's very limited basically on mere emotions. But the Holy Spirit now that lives in Zoe life, it, it produces this life. It's not something you have to work to attain or, you know, I mean, being obedient and not sinning and cooperating, all those things play a big impact on it. But, but you have to realize that this life we're talking about is the Spirit that produces it. 
You can't generate it in the flesh. The Spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The New Living Translation says it's the Spirit that gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Strength, might, ability, or mere human performance cannot produce this thing. You can work and go to school and study and do all these different things, but there is no way on your own efforts you can produce Zoe life. You can produce nothing of spiritual origin. You can produce all kinds of things, but nothing that has a spiritual origin to it. Nothing that comes from God. Why? Because it's an inside job. Not an outside. So it's the Spirit, the pneuma, It's pneuma, P H U N E M E A, pneuma. It's the Spirit or the Holy Spirit that produces life. The flesh profits nothing. The King James, uh, King James Version said that it is the Spirit that quickeneth. It's the Spirit that calls forth and calls out, produces the Spirit. The message says sheer muscle, willpower will not make anything happen. Zechariah 4 6 says, It's not by might or by power or human strength or muscles or ability, but it's by my spirit. It's not by human strength. You know, Nehemiah is saying it's, it's not, you know, the way you produce God life is not by might or physical or human attributes, it's, it's by the spirit produces it. So we can't live the Christian life. And we can't experience Zoe life without uh, being born again. Without Zoe life. It's the Spirit that does this. When I was working for Florida Parent Light, I used this example a few months ago and I'll do it again, but I was a service planner or designer. My job was to meet with a customer that was going to build something in a certain area, a subdivision or something, or a building, and they didn't have power. I was supposed to, you know, design the, the power lines, and uh, if it was a new, a new building, then I would see about getting new, uh, upgrading the power lines that existed. If it was new construction, and <coughs> there was a, I was over Port St. John, there was an, an area out there called 100 Acre Woods, and it was an under, a URD system, and that means there was a power line here and, and instead of back building, so this is the subdivision and it was plotted off with all kinds of lots and so let's say you know they were going to build 100 acres, it was 100 acres so they were probably building a couple hundred homes in there. You could build overhead power lines in there and uh, extend the power off and, and this was called a feeder. This was 13,000 volts, 13,000 kV, kilovolts, 1,000 volts. And so in this particular case, it was underground, so my job was to go out and see if they even had power available so long, long uh, uh, I think it was Tulsa Boulevard, up there. There, was, there was a feeder out there that had 13,000, future 23,000. And so my job was to, was to plan to go underground and to, strategically placed transformers. So we were to run a feeder to here and then it was going to come and go into these different transformers. And then these transformers would turn around and break it off into different homes. So, you know, I was supposed to lay all this out, order the material, get easements and calculate things. And it was, you know, wasn't normally my thing to do, but anyway, so my job was to plan this thing, and so I put all my abilities together, called on engineers, because I was kind of way over my head, and anyway, we, we, we got it all laid out, we got it all planned, we got the pipe in the ground, it was all built, it was ready to go, the houses were ready to go, and, and uh, but there still was no power. I had done everything on my end that I possibly could do, feasibly it was ready to work, and so the last thing that had to happen is that you know, they had to have a man that crawl up on the pole and he would put on rubber gloves and had this big stick 
and uh, there would be a, a switch that was right here. And so he would call out the pole and he would look around and say, we're coming hot, and everybody would run. <laughs> and of all people, I was running because if, if it blew all up, then it meant I did something wrong. So that was a big day, you know, and was I going to have a job or not or, or still have a job? So anyway, uh, you know, this system was, uh, you know, done, but it wasn't until that guy threw that jack in there and the minute he threw that jack in there and tapped into this live 13,000 volts immediately, that 13,000 volts sent power and sent life into that whole subdivision. Now all of a sudden you got TVs coming on and hot water tanks coming on and, you know, all kinds of power, everything's up and it brought life into that system. So apart from that life, apart from that power, there's just some system that's well planned out. So it's the same way with the Christian life. Is you know, it's it's not it's not the outward man. It's not performance. It's, us, it's not us mechanically doing things. I mean we have to read our word, we have to work our program, but ultimately if you want to experience God life, it's, it's the spirit inside that produces this life, that gives the power, that breathes life, and brings the abundant life that makes things come alive. It's his spirit that does that. He must come and do what only he can do. So it's going to take a, so what we're really talking about is it's, uh, you know, the spirit getting the abundant life is really what we call an inside job. How many of you have ever heard of reading in the paper about a bank that got robbed and they said, well, this bank is like the toughest bank and there's no way it could have been broken into and, uh, you know, there's no way. And, and what do they say? Last. Having looked at everything, they say, well, it must have been an inside. Somebody on the inside did something on the inside that opened up uh, and, and let the money get outside. So this Zoe life that we're talking about is something that, that we can't, it's something that comes from the inside out. It's an inside. It's something the Holy Spirit does and produces in us. So we have Zoe life, but we have to learn how to release this God life. We have to learn to turn inwardly and tap into it to be able to experience. And so next week we're going to start talking about the difference between thriving and striving and how to tap into this abundant life so that we can begin to enjoy it. Amen? Amen. All right, I was going to go into a lot more, but I think I'll stop here. And we'll dive into it, not next week, but the following week after that. Next week will be the Frasers, so let's get out there and invite some people, and then we'll come back the next week ready to go into part two of this. Amen? Amen.